Porpoise Pod swimming along here as we are counting down the days to Dolphins and Patriots week one. Very excited as the Dolphins camp is officially over. The roster is set this week. We're yeah. down to a 53. And we'll get some thoughts on uh, the final cuts coming up later on in the pod. But uh, interesting that we have uh, we did come out of cut down day, Solana, with uh, Mike Gusecki still on the team. He has not been traded. And so I figured we get to a little echolocation here on the show. That is how porpoises communicate. Ergo, we will listen to our favorite porpoises slash dolphins communicate here as Chris Greer doing a rare press conference this week alongside Mike McDaniel. I think McDaniel, he looked uh, he looked like relieved that he didn't have to carry the load of the press conference. He was kind of like throwing a zinger every now and then kind of guy. Yeah, anytime, you know, Chris Greer, he loves the suit-hat combo. Like, yes. there's very few people that can pull that off. But Greer, you know, walking around a little more confident lately, right? He got the Tyreek signing. People yep. are high on this roster. It almost feels like Chris Greer has never been able to breathe so easily as general manager of the Miami Dolphins. I feel like he 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 walked up on that podium. He wanted to answer questions. Yeah, he was feeling it. He was yeah. like, ah, bring it on, everybody. Uh, <laughs> nailed my last draft class. You know, we were supporting Tua. We got Tyreek Hill. Bring it on. But uh, the most interesting thing right now going in and questioning with this camp was going to be the future of Mike Gusecki. And uh, this is the Dolphins GM, Chris Greer, on uh, their trade talks or trade discussions with the Dolphins tight end. For us, we did not make any calls on Mike. Um, we had calls from two teams that reached out to us about Mike. Um, we never made any phone calls about him. We were always, Mike was going to be here, and I think everyone made a big deal about him being on the field. Uh, but Mike's a competitive kid, you know. Uh, he's been challenged to do some things he you know, hadn't been asked to do before, and, and he stepped up, and we were talking about the other day how last couple of weeks he's, he's he's been made some great strides in that area so uh, for us it was never about moving him or us trying to um, teams called asking because he's a good player and and um, so for us you guys have heard me say it for years you know I'll always listen it doesn't mean we're gonna do anything because I, I think that's negligent if we don't because you never know what kind of deal someone's gonna offer you on, on someone there you go. Uh, do you buy that, Solana? The idea that they didn't really pursue trading him, that teams just called about Mike Gusecki? I didn't at first, right? Like this whole time. I know the Preston Williams rumors, and I know the uh, the Lynn Bowden rumors um, uh, were out there as well, and I, I have no doubt the Dolphins were calling around asking about those two. I didn't buy the Gusecki stuff, but now I kind of do. Like I kind of feel um, like – they know there's value there, you know? Like, they know that's not somebody that they just give up. But if somebody else called, I don't think the conversation was as simple as, no, we're not trading him, nah, hang on. Yeah. I think they listen. And then, you know, with the final 53, them keeping five tight ends. Yeah. You know, that yeah. kind of leads to me to believe, like, all right, we were all very impressed with what Tanner Connor did in, in camp and, and some of the flash that he is, but he is an undrafted rookie. I don't know what, you know, you can't just roll him out there and think he's going to have the production. I, I, look, there has to be at some point, I think, with the Dolphins looking at Hunter Long and saying, all right, when is this guy going to, for lack of a better term, sink or swim with his, with his NFL career? So right. maybe there's a thought that he could take a little bit of a burst because he was definitely having some early struggles in camp as well. But none of them – are the offensive weapon as a receiver that Mike Gusecki is, not even Durham Smythe. I mean, Durham Smythe's career high in touchdowns is two. So this guy does have the credibility of being a very, very fierce weapon, but you also have a coach here who expects a lot out of that position but is like the way, I guess, that he has handled all of the the noise, you know? So yeah. I don't know. Here is uh, Mike McDaniel also speaking on Mike Gusecki and uh, raving about the way that he's handled all the adversity. No, the coolest thing too is there. There was um, noise that he's alluding to, and one of the cooler parts of training camp for me in general. Um, I made a point to the team the other day was that you know what Mike worried about and all that about getting better at blocking and catching, and he's there each and every day. He he's doing one or two things um, uh, better to his standard of the way he wants his football to look. And that, that's, 
that's all you can ask for. That's a um, that's a that's a guy that teammates and um, coaches and everyone respect are the ones that can ignore the noise and just try to get better. It's kind of an odd thing. So he actually brought up to the team. You know how we're trying to trade Mike Gusecki, or we're thinking about it. He handles that noise, everybody. Don't worry about that, huh? But Gusecki really is like the perfect teammate. Right, like he's always been one of those guys, you know, he's going to put his head down, he's going to get to work, he's going to do what he's been asked. And all the, the comments from Gasecki throughout training camp were, I know I got to get better. We talked about how he even said, somebody told me I was a, a wide receiver, a glorified yeah. wide receiver, mm-hmm. and uh, like that time is done. I've got to improve this part of my game, the blocking part of his game. There's no secret there. So it doesn't shock me that these guys, Chris Greer, Mike McDaniel, like they're pleased with Mike and his attitude and and the way he's approached this situation. But, again, as much as they say, you know, we weren't shopping him, everybody knows the situation. Everybody in that locker room understands the situation, which is, yeah, he's not the ideal tight end for this team. So anytime that's out there, anytime that's been understood by everybody, you never know. You, you just never know what's going to happen. And, and that, like... That's a part of the game, man. It really is. It's it's part of the business. Sure. And the other thing is, like, I'm sure you can make those examples of there's the right way to handle it, Mike Gusecki's way, and then there's the Preston Williams way, <laughs> which is like, make a stink, but you don't really do anything with that after right. you make a public stink about, I'm not happy, which, look, I mean, yeah, Mike Gusecki makes a ton more money, so obviously he wasn't going to get cut, but there's a reason why Preston Williams is no longer with the club. It's like, okay, you didn't acclimate to this situation or – you didn't really respond by performance in a situation of adversity. Like Mike Gusecki certainly was dealing with some adversity and seemed to come out of it on the other side pretty well. I think that the coach having a lot more faith in him, whereas a guy like Preston Williams was just like, I want him to be a man of it. I want him to be a man of his word. He's old to Mike McDaniel. And that resulted in you muffing punts by the end of the preseason. So I think that uh, I think certainly one of the things that Mike McDaniel were learning about him is that all coaches want accountability, but it's really he's not he's not a words guy. Like he is in actions of, hey, even he can call a Tyree Kill and says you messed up here, fix this. And one of the things that he likes is that Tyree Kill usually will take that and show the good example for everybody else. Right. Um, so interesting uh interesting dynamic there with uh where they're feeling on Gasecki. Gasecki spoke to the media later on in the week uh was first asked if he is uh, still happy to be on the Dolphins but they never called anyone obviously they value you was that something that he or Mike conveyed to you as you know rumors swirled the last couple of weeks no no and pleased how it worked out with you being here oh, am I, I pleased I, how I it worked out right I, I I do enjoy my time here so yes <laughs> well all right yeah. All right. All right. Okay. A little, a little touchy though. Right? A, little, a little frosty. A little frosty. A little frosty. Sensitive. You know, I understand. Yeah. He's, uh, he's not. Look, he's not in the. He's not. If he was ha- at his happiest, he would be happy with a long term deal. Anytime a guy is on a one year deal and you're essentially being told to prove it, even though it's a handsome living for 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 one year, you're making you know ten million dollars, eleven million dollars. The ideal situation is get signed long-term, have some security for your family, and all that type of stuff. Uh, one more for echolocation. This is Gasecki on uh, his reaction to McDaniel saying that he handled the adversity well. Uh, I mean, for him, I think it's, it's you know, one of, his, one of his rules and one of, you know, the things that, you know, he kind of uh, takes extremely serious uh, just because you can apply it in so many different ways in, in life and the game and all that kind of stuff. So, uh um, I wouldn't really call that part adversity, um, but there is going to be adversity in games that uh, you know you can you're going to have to be able to go through and um, you know ride the peaks and the valleys and come out come out a better better player and a better man because of it. Um, so absolutely, like a champ. Yeah, yeah. I like Mike. You know, like uh, it's hard not to like him. And I think yeah. the thing that's also been good is you know through all of the. Uh, I say one of the things that was great of him as a teammate last year when Tua was going through all that stuff, he was one of the guys very out in front publicly supporting his quarterback when nobody in the organization really was publicly. So for him to 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 have that, I think that that probably buys a lot. I'm sure like Tua, you know, this has been the thing where they've said that with Tom Brady where he's like conscious of like 
what he can do to get his big time receivers landmarks or money and all that type of stuff. So I'm sure that Tua has got to be well aware of that going into this stuff as well. It's just uh it's just an interesting thing going into the season about where uh where things stand with Mike Kaseki and what this season is going to mean for him and the rest of his Dolphins career. Yeah, it's also a tough spot because like you said, right, you want that long term deal. He wants to be able to go out there and show off his best attributes, show off what he's best at, which is not what the Dolphins are hoping he'll, you know, provide for this offense. And it's tough because that that, that could end up costing him a ton of money, Tobin. Like, yeah. you know, he realizes that. Uh but but like you said, there's a way to handle it. There's two ways to handle it. And he's doing it the professional way, which obviously down here we appreciate. Uh, but who knows how this will turn out? Maybe by week six, week seven, he's not happy, you know. And and Trade we'll get on time. yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. get we'll get a different different Mike Gusecki up at the podium. Do you think it's important? Like we talked about this in the uh, some of the preseasons that they try and target him. Like, do you think that is important to get that relationship off to, you know, a, a really good start when the games matter? Or do you think that if Mike McDaniel does like the little, you know, the the well-roundedness, let's say, of a Durham Smythe, like he just go with that, and that be the better place. Yeah, I, I think I think it's just go with Durham Smythe and 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 keep it going. But you have to believe that Mike McDaniel can figure out a way to get Gasicki involved somehow, somehow. right? Um, we we've talked about it where you know you risk the defense knowing if you put in Gasicki. There's a very high percentage. It's a pass play. You kind of tip off yeah, what you might sure. be doing. But that's the reason why you bring in Tyreek Hill. It's the reason why you have uh, Jalen Waddle. It's the reason why two is so effective rolling out. Like, there's ways to uh, to maximize even the defense knowing here comes a pass play, uh, especially when you have all these weapons. So I, I think we'll see an effective Mike Gusecki at some point. But look, there's a reason why I'm not drafting my fantasy league, Tobin. You know what I mean? Like we're we're in a fantasy league together. We are. There's, there's a reason why uh, Mike Gusecki is not is not going to go high up uh, as as one of the premier tight ends, and it's because there's just like that that factor of of not knowing. 